it is time to stop. Uh, but I'm not finished. Good evening. Uh, welcome to um, the third lecture in the series. I prefer not to, unlike Aton. Thank you for being here. Um, maybe just for those who don't know the idea or the concept of the series, the title I prefer not to comes from a novella, Bartleby the Scrivener by Melville. And it's about, let's say, an active or passive uh, form of resistance, which we think that architects could or should use often don't use, but could and should use. And it's also about a kind of active withdrawal from uh, uh, um, complying to uh, expectations that are, I mean, lots of clients think we should do it in some way, and maybe we have the freedom, and I think we have the freedom, to do it also in uh, different manners. That's, of course, why we asked uh, Lacaton Vazal to be present in the series. Uh, if you have seen the poster, which I think you have seen, um, there's a Place uh, Fernand Koch, uh, uh, Leon. Leon Cook, pardon. Uh, uh, from 89, 1989, 86, 89? Uh, the project. The project? 96. 96, oh, oh. Um, Which I think, I mean, maybe it's very literal interpretation of I prefer not to. Uh, and I don't think you're going to, are you going to show it tonight? No. It's not, it's not I prefer not to. Okay, that's it's interesting. I, I propose to. Yes. <laughs> well, the two go I hand propose, in hand. I propose two not to do. Yes. It's, it makes a difference. No, no, but it's, I think the two go hand in hand. And, uh, um, I don't think I have to introduce Anne. I think you are here because you know, let's say, part of the work. But the idea is, of course, also that under the uh, title, I prefer not to, which has become to do, not to do. Thank you for that. It's a beautiful uh, translation. Um, we'll also see different aspects of the work which so far you haven't heard about or seen. Uh, Anne, the word is yours. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your, your invitation. Um, just to introduce our work, I will uh, just uh, start with uh, some words about our design approach, because I think that it's important to understand uh, most of the, of the projects. The freedom of use, capacity of space, flexibility, to give importance and place to people and uses, to appropriation, those are the important qualities we aim in designing the project. We base the design of projects on two important elements. The first is the generosity of space. We like to provide extra space, oversized space, which allows to go beyond programs, to go beyond the standards and conventional uses. The generosity of space, the freedom of use, means giving more space to each for any program. It allows multiple uses while limiting conflicts of time and use. Large spaces procure a vital sense of escape and freedom, and that's something very important for us to give this freedom of use. The second element which is uh, important is to work with uh, open structure, very little constraining for the space, and work with an op op open space to provide capacity and freedom of use. Open structure, open space, minimum material in order to maximize space, allow to provide capacity and freedom of uses. Capacity means a great potential for filling the program, but also for flexibility, for evolution, for transformation, for reuse, and overall for inhabiting. Giving capacity to the space, to buildings, means building larger. Our aim in the designing a project is uh, to create extra space with undefined function. We aim to provide as much extra space as program space to make possible adaptation and appropriation. More individual space provides a more pleasant everyday life, allows to invite, to share, neighbors, friends, friends of children, 
and create better conditions for being more open to the social life. Building larger means um, to provide this extra space in the same budget. Economy is a key point. Economy for us is a tool of freedom that, unlike restricting and diminishing, opens possibilities and gives the margins for generosity and the extraordinary. For all the projects, we need and we want to fill in line with uh, these intentions, with our philosophy as architects, of course, but also as persons or uh, as citizens. This is extremely important for us and this is a condition to make projects. Beyond analysis, beyond technical and functional response, beyond all requirements that a project must fulfill, beyond the understanding of the issues, of the needs of the site, a project is also the result of a personal approach, of a personal commitment. For these reasons, it happens that we decide not to continue a project or to decline a project if we have doubts, if we don't feel in line with the topic or with the intentions or with uh, the approach of the client. All the projects that I, I, we show today have been uh, built, so it means that uh, it, was, uh, it has been cases where uh, we felt in line with uh, uh, programs, expectations, and, and the client. So it means that uh, designing a project, to my opinion, is not a neutral act. Designing a project implies to have positions to take options, to take risks, and to make decisions. So I will present uh, some of our projects today through this uh, angle of uh, intentions or positions and uh, angle of de uh, decision. The first uh, um, series of projects is about housing. Housing invents space for freedom and life. So it means that Designing housing for us is first not to undergo the standard, not to accept uh, the minimum. So that was uh, our goal, our aim, when we designed this first house for uh, a couple of, uh, a family of uh, four, four persons. We had a very small, they had a very small budget to build uh, this house. That was uh, our very first project in uh, 1992, uh, and um, of course we were aware that uh, building a house for such a small budget, uh, at the time it was something like uh, 60,000 euros or 55,000 euros, uh, but uh, anyway we were aware that it was uh, not easy, but we didn't want to compromise with the, our intentions of uh, uh, radically changing the standard. Um, we um, didn't accept that uh, uh, our skills of uh, architects couldn't allow to make, to make much more better than a standardized little uh, house that they could have uh, bought on the catalog and built on their uh, plot because that was their intentions to make it before we met. And our goal was to... Uh, um, both, uh, both um, intentions, the first one was to make a house much more larger uh, than the standard of uh, 75 square meters that they could expect at the time for their budget or for their f the size of their, their family. And um, if possible, to make twice bigger, to provide as much extra space as uh, the program space of the house. And the second uh, aim, the second goal was uh, to work in, uh, with a bioclimatic approach, uh, using all the climate uh, uh, resource for the house, uh, the sun, natural ventilation. Uh, it's why we uh, decided to use uh, this uh, uh, the, the simple technologies of the greenhouses in order to make this uh, very large uh, space uh, beside the house that was uh, first um, an extension of the, uh, the, the living space and second uh, a very good uh, intermediate space, uh, a winter garden that uh, would uh, allow to uh, 
to uh, to use at uh, the maximum the the sun um, resource. So and uh, we worked a lot. We uh, uh, we looked at. Uh, um, the cheap uh, construction, like uh, greenhouses, like uh, storage, and uh, and uh, we arrived to make this project in uh, in the budget and without uh, compromising with uh, any of uh, our intention of uh, generosity of, uh, of space. So that was for us um, a very uh, important project for for starting our career. It was um, a great, um, a very great experience, and uh, we acquired through this project um, a, a lot of uh, knowledge, and especially about this uh, question of uh, um, economy. That finally, rather than uh, undergo it, we have learned how to manage uh, the budget, how to manage manage uh, um, economical conditions. Uh, and to control it in a very uh, positive uh, way. So the house is uh, finally 180 square meters. It's, uh, it's already a long time that we did this house, but I, 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 I like to, to present it in the lecture because it's a kind of uh, starting point and uh, most of our projects are, are still working on this idea of uh, doubling the space, of double space, of unprogrammed space. We try to develop the same intentions for a program of social housing in uh, the city of uh, Mulhouse in France. Uh, here the, the idea was the same. Uh, not to build the standards, uh, not to accept the minimum for housing, uh, because we are really convinced that uh, for uh, creating good conditions of uh, everyday life, uh, the space is something very important for a family. Uh, to, uh, to, um, to give more space to a family allows to have a better relations between uh, uh, the members of the family, to allow to each of uh, of uh, the, the, the person to have his, uh, his, his own space. And uh, um, we can observe that uh, finally it creates um, a more relaxed uh, life for, uh, for the family. So in this case, uh, the, the, uh, the owner, a social housing uh, um, firm, uh, invited five architects to make uh, a project on this, uh, on, uh, this uh, site, which was a former uh, factory, but the factory has been destroyed, and it's the, in the middle of uh, uh, one of the biggest city workers in uh, in uh, Europe, with 1,600 uh, little houses built in the middle of the 19th uh, century. So here we propose uh, the, the the commission was quite open, and uh, uh, the client uh, asked to us to propose uh, new ideas of typology for. Uh, um, innovative uh, housing, and uh, we had just one uh, uh, one uh, constraint uh, was uh, the budget, which was really fixed and limited because this uh, housing project is uh, was subsidized by the government. It's public uh, subsidies, so it was very strict to work on uh, this with uh, this budget. So um, very fast, we proposed to uh, to work on the on the same uh, intentions and the first house, and uh, we proposed to, to the owner, and he agreed, uh, he agreed the, the project. Uh, he, we had an interesting discussion about uh, uh, what happens after the construction, about uh, the rent of the housing, because at the moment we are doubling the space, uh, he could double the, the rent, and that uh, happens very often. Uh, when the, the dwellings are uh, bigger, the rent is um, is uh, is higher, and uh, for social housing it uh, cannot be uh, uh, the, the case because uh, social housing is uh, for people with uh, quite low incomes, and uh, there is of course a limit of what they can pay for housing. But in this case, we had um, very early in the in the project uh, an interesting discussion with uh, the client. And we agreed together that uh, uh, we were involved to build a much larger, twice bigger than the standard for uh, 
for this housing, and uh, we were involved to make it in the, in the same budget. And we agreed together that if we uh, do that, if we arrive to make it, um, he promised that he will not increase the rent. He promised that he will uh, keep the, the level of rent for a typology uh, for a family, but not in function of, of the surface. And both together, but also uh, with uh, the four uh, other architects, we arrived to make this, uh, uh, this project, which is based on a very uh, uh, simple construction with uh, two levels. Again, we used also the bioclimatic construction with uh, a large uh, platform uh, of concrete with uh, nearly three meters, uh, three meters under ceiling, which is composed with only columns and uh, prefabricated concrete uh, slabs, uh, and three ranks of, uh, of uh, greenhouses coming from a catalog, exactly the, the same, which are built on the countryside to grow vegetables or, or flowers. And with this construction, we covered uh, all the plot and the maximum of uh, surface that we could uh, build on the plot uh, with a very uh, cheap construction using these uh, prefabricating elements. So that gave us a very large uh, volume that uh, here you can see the, just a picture from uh, the construction of the greenhouse. Just construction, which at, at, this, uh, at this phase, it's, li it's like a very big loft uh, for 14 houses that we had to divide into 14 uh, dwellings. So we uh, tried to, um, to define um, a rule of uh, dividing this space, and uh, we uh, defined that uh, every dwelling should have uh, uh, space on the two levels, ground level and the first level that every dwelling should uh, have a crossing uh, orientation, uh, no north and uh, south, or a two orientation on the corner for the smallest, or three orientation from, for the, the biggest uh, dwelling. And uh, we decided that uh, every uh, living room should have um, a facade of uh, six to seven meters wide, a transparent and a sliding door facade of uh, three, six to seven meters uh, uh, wide, and the bedrooms three meters. So we arrived to, to this uh, division of uh, space on the ground floor, and the first floor, uh, the division is more regular because we, we were more constrained by the structure of uh, the greenhouses. So in a way, this is uh, the rendering of uh, uh, a long section of uh, the of the housing and uh, every dwelling has uh, these two conditions: one condition on the ground floor and one space on the first floor. And uh, it's reversed because the uh, dwellings are combined by two. Sometimes it's small on ground floor and large on the first floor. And then we uh, built uh, the the project and. Uh, uh, we arrived uh, to, to build it in, uh, in the budget without um, expanding more than the budget. Here, this is the situation uh, uh, of the space that we have delivered to the users with the maximum uh, capacity of the space, with uh, no partitions, because it was uh, a proposal that we did uh, to, the, uh, to the clients that uh, because of the big size of the space, much bigger than uh, the normal uh, size, uh, and the two levels, uh, we propose to, uh, to, to, to give that to the inhabitants and to see how they will uh, uh, deal with the space without any partitions, uh, because we had the feeling that uh, the, uh, the space was acting as partitions. So uh, he agreed that we could make this experience, but uh, we agreed that we will come during two years after the completion to meet the inhabitants and uh, to, uh, uh, to listen what they have to say. And if some of them would ask to make uh, partitions from bedrooms, we would make it uh, later. Uh, but it's interesting to, to see this, uh, this state of uh, project because it's, uh, it's uh, really a decision not to make more, but to give to the user the maximum of uh, capacity and maximum of possibilities to allow uh, different families to uh, to use such uh, spaces. And you can see also all the, the systems that allow to create a good climate here in uh, this uh, winter garden, which is not heated. And uh, here, 
uh, after this, um, uh, beyond this uh, glass facade, this is a heated part of uh, the dwelling with all these uh, curtains, thermal curtains or solar uh, shading, which are totally part of uh, the regulation, natural regulation of the climate in, uh, in uh, this uh, construction. So crossing ventilation, uh, using all these systems for shedding, for thermal curtains, allows for the inhabitant to regulate himself uh, the very good conditions of uh, temperature, of, uh, of light uh, inside the, the dwelling from the other side, from the interior uh, space to the, the winter garden. In this case, uh, the winter garden, this extra space is uh, 40 square meters in addition uh, to the interior space. So this dwelling is, uh, was uh, 180 square meters. So two, uh, just two examples of uh, two apartments uh, after completion and after the inhabitants came, uh, just to see how uh, finally, people can find a good place and are very creative in, uh, in uh, using uh, the space. So just some, uh, uh, some uh, data. Uh, uh, this uh, one is a two-bedroom uh, dwelling in duplex. The surface is 130 square meters, uh, while standard, which was uh, requested by the client, uh, was uh, 70 square meters. And we did the, uh, the construction cost was the same, for this dwelling than for the standard dwelling of 70 square meters, and it was re rented the same rent as uh, the, the standard. So this uh, just um, the plan with uh, the ground, ground floor with a garage and a large um, bedroom with a bathroom and the first level with a living room, green uh, winter garden and uh, a second uh, bedroom. So the garage is, uh, is not used by all the inhabitants, so it can be used for uh, another use and uh, the, the parking. So to come back to this question of uh, partitions, uh, after two years of meeting people, we could uh, observe that no family has asked for building uh, partitions. They have all dealt uh, with the space as it was, and they really confirm that the distance between uh, the, the space, between the different spaces, like bedroom, living room, was uh, for them enough to create this uh, possible distance between people inside uh, the space. So this uh, second uh, dwelling, which is the same as the one as presented uh, empty, so this one is a four bedrooms uh, dwellings, 187 square meters, compared to the standard 100 uh, square meters for the same uh, amount of bedrooms. And again, the construction cost was uh, the, um, uh, the same as uh, the standard uh, dwelling and the rent the same. So the winter gardens uh, is an extra space which has not, uh, um, which is not constrained by the conventional furniture, and uh, it's really the place where the families may, uh, most often uh, are the most uh, creative, and they make their identity in uh, in the such uh, spaces. <coughs> so we uh, visit uh, 14 uh, dwellings and 14 starting from the same uh, basis of space, 14 dwellings, finally, which are very, uh, very different at the end, because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, the, uh, what uh, people bring uh, to the architecture, what they are doing to continue the architecture. So that's something important for us to know when we are designing projects, uh, when to stop when to stop designing, when we think that as architects we have done enough and then now it's, it's, uh, it's good to let the space uh, to people and not to do more that may, might constrain uh, the, the, the life or the uses. For the same client, uh, we, we was very, 
very happy with the results of the first uh, project. Uh, we did a, another project of, uh, some years late, le later that uh, we have uh, recently completed uh, in quite different uh, uh, neighborhood, which is uh, cl closer to the city center, which is more, more density. And the challenge here was uh, not to discuss again about uh, the size of the dwellings, because uh, we had this uh, common agreement. Uh, that we didn't have to discuss anymore, but how to reproduce uh, these uh, conditions of uh, oversized uh, living space, of uh, bioclimatic construction, in, uh, not in uh, houses, uh, but in uh, conditions of uh, buildings with uh, more levels, uh, four to five uh, levels. But we, uh, we knew both together, that we didn't want to compromise with uh, the size uh, of the dwellings. As again, it's uh, social housing, and uh, it's integrated in, uh, in an existing neighborhood. The master plan was done by uh, an urban planner, and uh, we had just to, to follow uh, the footprint of uh, the buildings on, uh, on the ground. So we, again, we used 100% of uh, what the city allows to build there, and even more, uh, the, our client had a discussion with the mayor of the city, which was interested, who was interested by this project. And uh, um, if we had followed the, uh, the rules of construction in terms of uh, square meters to build, uh, the num uh, we had to choose between the number of dwellings and the size of the dwellings. But with the client, we wanted to have both. We wanted to have uh, maximum dwellings, but uh, big dwellings. So the, the, the mayor of the city, uh, because it was uh, a neighborhood and a renovation, he accepted that we make a project and then that we come back to, to discuss with, uh, with the city to see if uh, they could uh, change the, um, the regulation uh, which were applied to the plot in order to, uh, to achieve the project. And finally, we, uh, we allowed, the city allowed uh, to make a more surface uh, on uh, the plot uh, to keep at the same time the, the number of the dwellings, but to make these dwellings much bigger. Because it's, most of the time, it's one of the big problems. If you want to, big, to build bigger, uh, the consequence is that you make less dwellings. And uh, if uh, you discuss with a private developer, he never agrees to make less dwellings because he prefers to have uh, uh, more dwellings and smaller dwellings. So that's also interesting to, to work uh, not only on the uh, architecture itself, but also to a lot of uh, peripheral uh, issues that are very important in, uh, the, in, uh, in the success of the project like uh, here the city regulation, like uh, before in the, in the relation between rent and surface. So that's also um, these issues that uh, are really part of the project and uh, that we have uh, to discuss uh, carefully, because if not, uh, some uh, project or some ideas have no chance to, uh, to, to, to go to, to the end. So just um, the plan with uh, here, we have three blocks. So here again, we used a very uh, efficient construction system uh, with a large uh, span of uh, 10 meters so that we, do we don't have in the dwellings any uh, impact of the structure. So the structures I is uh, always uh, in the facade or in between uh, the dwellings. So it allows to have uh, to detach, to separate uh, the layer of the construction, the layer of structure, and the layer of the finishes, which is for us interesting because it allows uh, more flexibility, but also uh, a possibility or capacity of uh, reuse, which is much more important in uh, public buildings, but it can be also interesting in, um, in uh, housing. And uh, we uh, put the staircase out of the system of structure, uh, again, to uh, use the full, uh, uh, the full dimension of the floors to create uh, living space. So uh, we did also the system of uh, winter gardens of uh, four meters plus a balcony that allows to go outside. And this is also the, this uh, idea of uh, 
giving for uh, any dwelling in the city the same conditions as a villa. A villa is, uh, is uh, the, the model of a villa is a kind of house which is on the plot. And uh, the great interest and the great uh, quality of a villa is that from any place of the interior space, you can move to outside and turn around and give possibilities to pass uh, to, to other ways, to other mobilities in, in, uh, inside the space. And compared to a basic dwelling with uh, windows and walls, in, uh, in a villa and uh, here in these dwellings, this is always a possibility to continue, to go on, uh, to go farther and to turn not really around, but uh, to, to, to move, to uh, extend the capacity of move uh, inside the, the dwelling. So this is uh, this construction which uh, also is done because we, we have a high uh, level of seismicity, which is, uh, is uh, done in between the blocks, uh, again, not to constrain uh, the living space. The, the dwellings on the ground floor, they have uh, uh, little gardens and no balconies. And uh, this uh, dimension is, uh, is uh, nearly three meters. So the 10 meters uh, is a dimension of the large sliding uh, uh, glass door that open from the living room kitchen uh, to the winter garden and to the balcony. So this uh, 10 meters without uh, any uh, columns. And uh, in, the other, in the other way, we don't have uh, neither columns or, or walls that makes the space uh, um, extremely capable to be used. So on the top levels, a little bit uh, higher on the ceiling because we use uh, uh, the roof, uh, the, the space under the roof. And always balconies around uh, in extension of the winter garden or the living space. Another um, condition of housing uh, in an extremely... Uh, extraordinary uh, landscape on the, along the seaside. Here, that was not the question of making uh, dense or collective housing. It was the, uh, the commission for um, holiday house on, on the, the seaside. So um, the, the place is, uh, is very nice, fantastic. And, uh, a pine trees forest on uh, dune, sand dune, and uh, on, uh, on the basis on the sand dune, uh, the, the water, the, the bay uh, of uh, Arcachon on the, the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So here, what's uh, the main decision? Looking at this site, we were really impressed by the quality of the natural site with uh, all these pine trees on uh, the sand. And the question is uh, how to build a holiday house on such a site, so on, on such a site, uh, and the topic immediately was not to cut trees, not to eliminate, not to clear up. So how to do it? And that was our challenge and uh, the goal that we had for this house. So we proposed to uh, make a, um, a platform elevated from the ground of uh, four meters which allowed to not to, to damage the sand dune and to uh, not to cut trees and to keep them uh, and to build around uh, with uh, um, simple uh, steel construction made with uh, little uh, elements that could be uh, brought on the site uh, by two, two men, two persons. The foundation like uh, needles uh, without any links in the foundation, again, to keep, to keep the ground uh, natural and uh, to use all the capacity of uh, the site to, to, to bring them into uh, the quality of the space of the house. So the trees, they, they cross the house where they are. There is no special scenography of the trees. They are just crossing. There is, there is just uh, um, an overlapping of two layers. 
the layers of the forest and the layer of the construction. So this is a plan with uh, all the... So we took care um, with um, the move of the trees uh, when there was a lot of uh, wind. So we, um, for that, uh, the only thing was uh, to observe. There was no study that uh, could say uh, how it's moving when there is tree. So uh, as the moment we, we heard that there was a big storm, we, we drove very fast uh, to the site to see how it was mo moving and we evaluated uh, the, uh, how it was moving to let the holes uh, around uh, the trees and then uh, we define uh, some, so it's not really moving on the first three, four meters, uh, but five, six meters, it's, uh, it can move uh, uh, nearly, uh, nearly one meter, one meter. And then we adapted uh, some uh, elements around the trees to make uh, the uh, waterproofing. So inside, um, the goal is that uh, the architecture is not the most important here. The most important is uh, to have this uh, fantastic view and uh, to, feel, uh, to feel well and uh, to feel in... Uh, in um, in, in line with, uh, with uh, the nature. Again, the housing, but uh, this is an important uh, uh, field we are working on, which is uh, what to do with the modern housing uh, heritage. It's a very important uh, question nowadays. Uh, most of the city in the world have this very big uh, developments of the 60s, 70s on, uh, uh, on the, the suburbs. And today, uh, in uh, many cities, it's uh, the question of uh, what to do with uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, heritage of uh, modern housing, which uh, would need to be renovated, uh, which in um, many cases uh, are also the place where there are a lot of uh, social problems, and uh, we have in France a lot of these uh, uh, critical uh, neighborhoods. And it's a question that uh, we are working on since uh, nearly 20 years. Uh, and uh, especially in France, uh, it, was, uh, it became uh, an important question in, uh, in uh, the early uh, uh, 2000, when uh, the government decided to launch uh, a very important program of urban renovation, including the renovation of uh, the housing buildings. And this program was uh, based on uh, the demolition of uh, more than of uh, nearly 200,000 uh, dwellings uh, with the goal to rebuild them to one-to-one. Uh, -one. Uh, and uh, um, a huge budget of uh, something like uh, 20 billions of uh, euros to demolish these uh, units and to rebuild. So uh, the cost of uh, demolition and rebuild is um, for a dwelling is uh, something like uh, 150,000 to 180,000 euros uh, for demolishing a unit and uh, rebuild. So at the time we, uh, we were a little bit surprised by this uh, huge and massive uh, um, program of uh, demolition and uh, we couldn't believe that uh, this, um, um, this period of architecture, quite recent, 60s, 70s, it's uh, 50 years, was so bad, was so bad well, uh, that uh, it's, uh, the only solution was to tear down. And we wanted to, to study the, this question uh, because we had uh, the strong feeling that it was uh, a big mistake for many reasons. Uh, of course, for su sustainable reasons, but also for the reason of uh, people. Many people are living there. They, uh, of course, their life of every day is not the best. Uh, but it's also due to uh, many other problems and housing, problems of uh, employment, of education, of insulation, because uh, these neighbor neighborhoods are quite far away from uh, the cities. And we started this uh, study with uh, really one uh, idea in mind. Uh, never demolish, never subtract, always 
uh, transform, reuse, and take care to uh, what we have in hands. So we started with this uh, uh, strong intentions not to demolish, not to subtract. Transformation, always add, extend, give more to do more and better. And we decided to start by our own, with a friend, Frédéric Druot, um, a research that we named PLUS and that we could publish some uh, years later, which was based on the case studies of uh, some uh, examples which were in the program of uh, the National Program of uh, Renovation. All these buildings were scheduled to be teared down. And we studied very carefully uh, what to do in the perspective of uh, keeping the buildings and transforming, and also not only in terms of uh, technique, but also in terms of uh, economy. Most of them, uh, like this one, uh, had been already uh, renovated in the 80s, in the 80s uh, but very badly done, just uh, uh, an insulation on the facade that didn't uh, bring any uh, quality uh, uh, to the housing, but just put uh, uh, awful uh, new cladding uh, with uh, many times uh, asbestos. Uh, and uh, we could observe that in many cases, the first building which were in the schedule of demolition has been already renovated uh, uh, 15 years uh, before. So that was interesting to learn a lot about uh, this uh, example and to, to uh, study uh, in depth uh, all the, the aspects of uh, those projects. Compared to some uh, uh, other buildings uh, built exactly at the same time in the 60s, 70s, but made with a, a better care, a good architecture, uh, uh, they are still uh, very uh, uh, appreciated. Uh, the people, uh, families living there, uh, they feel well. No one uh, uh, thinks to demolish them. It's based on uh, good quality of dwelling, but also good quality of uh, common space. Uh, but not only the housing, but also the common space, which has a very good quality, simple quality, but uh, welcoming, and uh, this is uh, still the original spaces, uh, the interior space of the dwellings in a simple but uh, very nice with large uh, openings with uh, balconies. So we uh, compared these uh, two situations and uh, we saw that that was uh, important to start uh, the, the, mm, the design of the transformation from the interior space and not from the outside. Uh, from the outside, it's quite easy to say that it's ugly, we will change uh, uh, the, the ugly cladding by a new one. We will. But uh, the most important is that um, a renovation of a building must, the first benefit should be for the quality of housing, for the quality of living. It's why we decided to, to make this research from the point of view of the inhabitants, starting from the interior of the dwelling and considering that uh, a building is not a block, but a, a big amount of individual spaces, individual situation, and that all of the situation should have a good quality of, uh, of uh, space. So uh, compared to the um, good, situ the good uh, spaces, uh, opening uh, the facade, creating extension uh, would transform uh, these uh, buildings simply but in a very, uh, very qualitative uh, way. And uh, the, technically, uh, it was always possible. There was always a solution to make it. Uh, and in terms of cost, uh, making such transformation was uh, one third uh, of the cost of the demolition and rebuild. It means that for 50,000 euros, that was possible to, uh, to make these transformations. And of course, making, making it with the inhabitants, without emptying the buildings. Because one of the most uh, critical things was that uh, demolition forces people to move. And many times, uh, no one proposed to them to stay in their neighborhood. So that's, um, we, we could observe some uh, um, uh, very uh, sad situations of uh, people looking at their building being demolished, but 
even if uh, the building is uh, ugly, it was their life. It was their, uh, the place where many times they were born or, or they lived for many years. So uh, the study was published and uh, we had uh, absolutely no influence in the national program and uh, the, the research was published in, uh, uh, in uh, Spain. So the program of demolition is, uh, is uh, still going on in France since more than 10 years. Uh, I think that more than 150,000 dwellings has been uh, demolished. Uh, only 120,000 have been rebuilt for a budget of uh, more than 20 billions. It means a loss of uh, quite a number, an important number of uh, dwellings. So afterwards, we could uh, uh, work on uh, this project after a competition. So that was uh, one of the examples, which was not in the national program because it's a city of Paris, Paris which is not in, uh, in uh, part of the national program. But here we proposed to work with the same intentions, it means starting from the quality of the interior space and bring this quality to the best level uh, without emptying buildings. So it means uh, opening, making uh, additions uh, to, uh, to give a better quality of space and doing that also to, uh, uh, to solve or to, uh, to bring solution to the thermal efficiency. So the, the, the addition here, uh, which is uh, in blue, it's a winter garden. In, in uh, green, it's uh, extra uh, bedrooms or extra living rooms. So this, uh, ad, uh, this uh, transformation of uh, uh, the space from here to here allows to create a new complex of facade, which is uh, efficient enough uh, to, uh, to cut in uh, more than two uh, the, the consumption for the, the heating. Of the for energy, so that was based on uh, on modules uh, that we built uh, out of the site and that we bring uh, in front of the uh, the facade after having removed uh, the existing facade. So that's the process of uh, extension in this case, uh, two meters point uh, five. So and from uh, this. Uh, interior space before and after the works. And uh, for most of the dwellings, we didn't change in, uh, inside when the, the people didn't want to change their decoration, furniture, colors, and, and so on. So we, most of the time, we, we did the, the extension from the uh, previous facade, and uh, inside we refurbished uh, electricity, sanitaries, and so on. And this, uh, this, uh, um, uh, the result is uh, a very strong transformation of the building is itself, which is not due just to the change of the cladding, but through the transformation of the, uh, the uh, quality of uh, living space. So the inhabitants have not re removed during the construction. And the second project that we uh, have uh, completed recently on the much bigger scale, which is these three blocks in uh, the city of Bordeaux, 530 dwellings. Uh, the city studied uh, for a while the demolition of uh, these blocks and uh, rebuilt uh, uh, some lower blocks at the, at the place. But it was quite uh, complicated to find uh, rapidly 530 new dwellings to uh, relocate all these families. So finally, they decided to keep the buildings and to make a uh, transformation. This is a neighborhood of uh, uh, 4,000 uh, dwellings, uh, which was uh, a little bit insulated of the city center, but now totally integrated uh, in uh, the city. So this is uh, these high blocks, which are really high compared to the, to the city, which is quite uh, low. So we uh, applied again the, the same uh, intentions that we proposed for the competition. And again, this idea of uh, visiting all the dwellings and to consider that uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is not that that we must see, but this. This is uh, the interior side of the dwelling. So this is a collection of uh, a big amount of uh, interior space. 
And the first thing is uh, to visit the dwellings and uh, to see that uh, inside is a big uh, richness. What we can find uh, ugly from outside, from inside we totally forget that this is a block and uh, uh, all this situation that uh, the value that the people are giving to uh, the space is um, something very precious that uh, we really want uh, to take care in, uh, in the projects. So the, the goal here was to bring, uh, the, the, we, have, we have these very long blocks with uh, two thirds of the dwellings with two orientation and one third with just uh, one orientation on the south. And these big blocks is, uh, are divided in four smaller, smaller units with uh, each uh, staircase and elevators. Uh, so this is one uh, part of, the, of this uh, big block. So the extension is uh, only on south, on front, of four meters, and we opened all the, the handrails so that from every room, this is possible to move to the winter garden, but also to, uh, to move from one room to another one. And we did also some of the works on uh, changing elevators, uh, electricity, sanitaries, and so on. So again, we work with uh, prefabricated elements so that we could have a, a quite intense uh, schedule of uh, construction because, again, no, uh, no family has moved during uh, the, the construction uh, works. And that was a very rigorous process of uh, construction uh, that we developed with the contractor. And we built also on the rooftop uh, some uh, other dwellings, like a uh, case uh, study in a uh, very uh, nice um, uh, sp uh, spatial condition. So starting from this uh, block, um, the uh, construction of these uh, elements, uh, one level a day, uh, the, the blocks, the floors, they came with the track and they were immediately uh, built. Uh, in front. Uh, for all this uh, time of construction, there is no disturbance to the inhabitants because they are inside and they, don't, uh, they, don't, uh, they are not disturbed by the construction. And uh, the building, some, uh, some weeks later, when uh, uh, all, the, uh, all is, uh, is completed. The cost for the transformation of uh, these apartments is uh, around 45,000 euros per square meter, per, uh, per dwelling, sorry. Uh, and this, uh, this gives um, a new, very long life to uh, these uh, buildings. So now I can show you very fast this uh, process of uh, construction from uh, these elements, uh, which, are, uh, which have a total independent uh, foundation. They are not supporting by the existing building. A very precise uh, um, operation for, uh, for building these elements, and then they prepare the level above. When three levels are built, we start uh, the process of uh, opening the handrails. Opening handrails and uh, building the a uh, new facade should take two days maximum. That was a commitment taken with the uh, inhabitants. During these two days, we put this uh, element inside to protect uh, everything which is uh, inside. And then uh, the new glass windows. And step by step, they get this new uh, extension. For some dwellings, it's, uh, the extension is the same amount of square meters that uh, the, the surface of the, the dwelling they had uh, before. And uh, through this uh, work of uh, providing space, light, more facilities, the transformation of the facade is, uh, let's say, radical. <laughs> so um, for these three blocks, 
and a totally new uh, appearance for this. Uh, well, sorry. <laughs> Some pictures before, af after. Just to remember how it how it was, <laughs> because we forget quite fast. The importance of uh, having uh, the same uh, level of uh, inside and uh, in the winter garden. And uh, just a few days later, the appropriation is, uh, is uh, already uh, there. In different ways, sometimes it's uh, more timid, sometimes it takes time. But we have a big amount, a uh, big collection of, uh, of uh, pictures of all these uh, dwellings. It's important to, to have this capacity to see the, rich, the richness of we, that we have when we start this project. Because uh, it, ga it gives uh, the most uh, important part of uh, such project. So the new elevators that uh, allow to facilitate uh, distribution of buildings. So here this uh, just uh, the facade after extension, then we, we can observe all these uh, plants, uh, appropriation of, uh, of the space. And on the rooftop, these uh, uh, new dwellings, uh, which uh, are uh, adapted uh, uh, to the, all these uh, chimneys, and uh, this creates a quite amazing space on, uh, on the top, which is uh, it's very light construction because we couldn't bring so much weight on the, the existing buildings. Uh, but uh, uh, location is uh, fantastic in, um, in the sky. I remind that it's uh, social housing. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few numbers. Um, that on the left, it's uh, the existing. On the right, uh, after transformation, and just to show that we added uh, uh, something like uh, 50, um, 50 square meters uh, per dwelling in usable era. It means including the winter gardens. The energy saving was divided by three just by this addition of uh, winter gardens. And the cost of uh, transformation is 45,000 uh, net per dwelling. Another kind of uh, project, which is uh, about uh, public space for, for public use, for art, for education. And again, our, um, our aim is uh, to create uh, maximum freedom of uh, uses. This is uh, in Paris, uh, Palais de Tokyo. Uh, this was uh, an existing building uh, built in uh, 1937 for a universal exhibition in Paris. And here our goal was uh, not to constrain, not to constrain uh, the artist in uh, doing uh, uh, exhibition, not to constrain the public in, uh, in uh, visiting the exhibition. And uh, the space is, uh, was uh, already fantastic in terms of uh, architecture or space, uh, provided by, by this uh, project, which uh, appears quite uh, classical, looking from the uh, outside. And uh, this is the pictures from... Uh... It's time. It's time to stop. Uh, but I'm not finished. Uh, and this was uh, the spaces uh, when the museum opened in uh, thirty-seven. But we, uh, th there was a very big project for renovation, which started in the early 90s, but stopped a few months later because the government decided that it was uh, too expensive or that uh, finally the, the space was much better to make a museum than uh, space to exhibit uh, or to make a cinema. So they decided to stop the project and the building stayed for a long while in a very bad situation with uh, water coming inside, with all partition uh, destroyed. And we were involved in the competition to, um, to make something here, like a temporary installation for a few years uh, to uh, exhibit uh, contemporary art, but uh, for uh, young uh, artists, young creation. 
So um, the visit of the space was uh, amazing to, to see all these uh, spaces with different heights, different qualities of light, sometimes coming from uh, uh, large windows, sometimes coming from the roof. And uh, the budget was uh, extremely small. Uh, first, it was uh, 3 million uh, euros for a building which is uh, 26,000 square meters. But, of course, it was not requested in the competition to uh, renovate the uh, old building. It was just requested to do uh, uh, the maximum we could. Uh, but due to the quality of space, we proposed that uh, what we had to do was just to create, again, the minimum conditions of uh, security, of comfort, so that it, the door could open again uh, to make uh, exhibition. And uh, we made a list of... Uh, the most important works to do, like uh, um, fill the holes in the, in the ground, reinforce the structures, uh, bring electricity, elevators, stairs, fire security, and so on. And finally, uh, doing these works, we spent the three millions, and there was nothing more to make any uh, finishes. But uh, we consider that uh, it was enough to open it again and uh, make exhibition. So the work was... Uh, uh, we did that for, uh, and uh, it was uh, done like this. For uh, uh, it was supposed to, to to be for five years, but uh, it was very successful. And uh, finally, the government decided to uh, to prolong the the time of use and uh, to continue the temporary for a while without any limit. So we were involved in the second phase and. Uh, uh, we work in uh, the same uh, way, and uh, because we had well prepared the situation in uh, reinforcing or, or bringing uh, 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 some uh, principal elements, that the second phase uh, was a little bit more important because we had to do uh, big works, on, uh, especially on uh, the roofs and, uh, and so on. And the second phase, we could open uh, the 26,000 square meters uh, in total for uh, exhibitions and a few parts for storage and administration. But the work was, um, for us, was not a global work. It was, like you see here, all the red parts uh, was, uh, were uh, renovated, were uh, subject to works, and that was a, a, a project that uh, requested to work uh, case by case, square meter by square meter in detail, and not to have a, a global uh, project of uh, renovation. And at this condition uh, of uh, uh, discussing about any colon, what we should do to reinforce, to, to, uh, uh, to ensure uh, the fire security and the treatment was uh, different. Sometimes we had to reinforce the structure, sometimes we had just had to put plaster, sometimes we had to replace a column because it was broken. Uh, but uh, uh, the work is different uh, for uh, all the columns, for uh, all different floors, and uh, this is uh, the additional element that we did uh, for the security. And then it opened again in uh, 2012 uh, with a very great success uh, since uh, the, the, the first opening and then the second with very, uh, very nice and very good uh, exhi exhibition that uh, used the space in uh, very different ways. And uh, the space is, uh, is open always, but we provided a big amount of uh, movable partition so that they can... Uh, they can make different uh, organization of uh, space at the condition that after every exhibition they come back to the maximum capacity and they come back to the open space for the next curator or the next, next uh, artist. So uh, we use also all the different uh, atmosphere, sometimes in, uh, in the dark, sometimes in, in some uh, little rooms like this one. Uh, which was um, never opened at the construction of the building because there were no uh, security exits. And we discovered uh, behind the walls that this, uh, this room was uh, existing and we created uh, uh, security uh, doors so that it could become a concert or conference room. Uh, and some of the spaces that are uh, always used by the artist uh, and the the most important when we are working for Space for Heart is that we, we must not predict anything. 
we must think to an architecture which is able uh, to accept any idea, any project of, uh, of uh, the artist. Because um, you have a stair, you cannot think that an artist will make something there, and some uh, months later you come and an artist has done something in the stair. So it's important to, uh, to work in a, with a very free mind and to make possible everything in uh, such uh, buildings. So we uh, created this uh, stair, yes, uh, the, uh, here, uh, to link all the levels, which were no, not linked because this, uh, uh, this uh, space was a form of storage of uh, the building and not uh, uh, allocated for exhibition. But this is not a museum, so they don't need any storage. So it's why we extended at the maximum the capacity of exhibition space and reduced uh, the space for storage at the, at, uh, the minimum. So the story is uh, very long, and I could just make a lecture on this project, so the story is long, and so that for us also that was uh, an amazing story because uh, for, for uh, the first phase we nearly lived inside uh, and made the project uh, on, on the place and uh, that's uh, for us also a very, uh, very good uh, memory and an extremely good experience also um, because of uh, all the technical points that we have to, uh, to deal with uh, like uh, security, like uh, fire resistance of the structure that in this space couldn't be treated in a conventional way. So we had for uh, every element to try to uh, convince, to develop uh, uh, different ways of working, uh, of course totally uh, in line with the regulations because it's not really possible to build something out of the regulations. Uh, but it's interesting to see that many times the regulations and especially in France, as always, uh, a line that allows to turn it. So it's important to understand where is uh, this uh, little gap and to take this gap to enter and to find. Uh, so, in, for example, in, uh, in the building, uh, the engineer said that the, resist the fire resistance of the columns and the floors was uh, zero because they didn't know, uh, they didn't have plans of the former construction, they didn't know what, uh, uh, how it was made. So they prefer to say uh, without any, um, um, in any position of risk that uh, the, that was null. So uh, if it's null, if it is null, um, the firemen say, okay, you have to protect everything because uh, we need to, uh, to have two hours of uh, resistance of fire. So it means that in such buildings, everything should be recovered uh, by uh, uh, plaster or some uh, special elements. It's a, 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 a huge cost, but also it's, uh, it's very bad material. So uh, we arrived to convince that we could use some other, um, some other methods like uh, prefiguration of files inside the building uh, what they do in England, for example, but in France it's, uh, it's never done. But it's allowed by the regulation, and we could make it. And uh, we took some uh, 10 uh, different artworks, some of them with a lot of papers, uh, some others with uh, uh, old wood, and uh, the, um, um, an institution uh, which is uh, in France, uh, um, which has the skill of doing this uh, research, uh, did the, the, the test, um, digital uh, prefiguration of uh, how it would uh, burn in, uh, in the building. And we could see that uh, even one tone of paper don't burn more than 20 minutes. And uh, in the same time, we did some uh, concrete tests on the structure and uh, uh, really studying the, um, the concrete, the, the, the steel inside, uh, we could make a good map of uh, the real resistance of the structure, which was in between 30 to 55 uh, minutes of fire resistance. So if in one hand, uh, uh, an artwork of uh, one tone of paper would burn 20 minutes. So uh, in regard to the regulation, 
the structure, it means that the structure is able to resist uh, to the fire. And uh, in, uh, it was a, a process of six months to try to convince uh, engineers, our client, the firemen, the, uh, the authority administration, uh, but finally they accepted to make it as a, an experience and, uh, and finally it, uh, it worked. Just again to say that um, making, designing a project is, uh, is designing space, but it's also uh, necessary to develop a kind of uh, intelligence of the construction, of the method, of system. Uh, if, if we want to, to, to give us, as uh, architects, this freedom of uh, opening the field of uh, design. So now, uh, I will go fast because maybe it's, it's too long. Um, another project, which is a school of architecture, uh, that we built in uh, the city of uh, Nantes in France, uh, completed in uh, 2009. And here again, and uh, we come back here at this point to uh, the first house with this idea of double space. Uh, a school of architecture, uh, as it was uh, described in the brief, um, had the project to be more than a school. Uh, the school had the project to, to be also um, a partner with this, uh, uh, the, the, the city uh, projects uh, and also the debates about how the city should be uh, developed, should be thought about architecture. And they, they wanted to have a space that allowed to host all this uh, discussion, these uh, debates. So for us, it was clear that um, the program, as, as it was uh, uh, written was not enough to host all these extra functions and that it would be necessary to, uh, to provide uh, more space. And uh, we started with this idea of uh, double space and program space uh, to invent uses. And the decision is, is not to limit uh, uses. So the school is uh, using uh, uh, the maximum uh, of uh, volume that we can build on the space. Uh, the space was much bigger than uh, what uh, the plot was much bigger than what we needed for building, uh, but due to the uh, the master plan around, we had already a lot of public uh, space, public era, and uh, we didn't feel interesting to have uh, another public space, outdoor public space in front of the school, and we preferred to create indoor public space and to extend. Uh, the envelope of the school so that this, uh, uh, the, the city life could also come uh, inside. So there are two buildings because it was uh, the specificity of the plots divided in two parts. And uh, the school is um, first like um, we propose uh, the competition, the project in two phases, in two, two, two concepts. The first phase was to build uh, big infrastructure. Uh, that uh, was made with uh, uh, big uh, slab, big floors, uh, that would allow to, to build on each of them something of uh, 1,000 uh, kilos. And uh, then uh, the School of Architecture was uh, the infill of the structure. It means that uh, the infill is, uh, has a temporality which is different of the structure. The, structu the structure can stay long, the infill can change. And this is also the flexibility which was expected uh, from the school. So from this uh, uh, ground floor eras with nine meters and a ceiling that allows to make uh, very big models, uh, here the floor is uh, natural ground uh, because we saw that it was the best to allow to rebuild something on it uh, compared to a concrete uh, floor. And this is connected uh, at the ground floor with all the uh, sidewalks and the public uh, space uh, around. So the nine, uh, nine meters high and the ceiling allows to have this big space, but also allows to redivide uh, the height into two or three uh, additional uh, light uh, construction, like mezzanine, uh, to provide uh, to provide different space. And this, uh, uh, this infill, this uh, mezzanine, could be built at the same time of the project, but it could be built also uh, later, 
because the floors could allow to rebuild on them without having to, to reinforce the structure or to rebuild uh, new uh, foundations. So this uh, huge space allows uh, not only being making models, but also any, uh, any uh, events like uh, concerts, conference. Uh, the auditorium uh, itself is, uh, is uh, very large and open to the outside. It uh, allows to make uh, uh, any, uh, any events like a dance or, or theater or conference. Uh, this is widely open and this is not only uh, an auditorium for the education, but also uh, allows to any uh, other kind of uh, use. And the upper levels are uh, both have uh, 6.5 uh, point, um, meters in the ceiling, and uh, they are more uh, dedicated to the to the school of architecture, with uh, the first level for the common uh, spaces, uh, libra um, library, uh, classes, and the uh, second level, this one, uh, which is uh, the classrooms and the studios for the project, uh, with, for the student uh, life. And uh, the uh, organization, like uh, we see here, is always to have this uh, double space. Uh, here the classrooms or the studio, and here an empty space of the same amount of square meters, which allows the combination of use between the program space, uh, the, the studios, and the unprogrammed space. So sometimes it's totally empty, but sometimes it's also the place for workshops. It's a space is, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, a lot, is, is given to, uh, to all the studios and they have to negotiate uh, the schedule of use uh, of uh, this space. The only condition is that after the use, they must uh, give back the space to the other studio as they have found it uh, before. It means with the maximum of uh, potential of space and capacity. So here it's like a catwalk for a fashion, uh, they organize a fashion week. There are 16 associations of students who, who have uh, all a lot of projects to propose uh, to the director. And uh, the school is uh, really um, a space for education, but also for, for life. The connection with uh, the city is, uh, is widely open. Such spaces like here, which uh, allows to make uh, extra workshops or to invite um, uh, other schools to come here and make uh, workshops. And this, uh, the connection with the city is uh, always uh, present through this uh, perspective and, uh, and uh, this large, uh, open, large doors, doors. From here, the space, which is a uh, uh, normal space, standard space with uh, the conditions of uh, comfort, uh, heat, heat, heat uh, uh, closed uh, and uh, extra space here, which is uh, a kind of uh, winter garden with uh, different uh, climatic conditions. So this space uh, totally opened, like a terrace on the, on the city that allows all these uh, uses. And all the, every floor, all the floors are deserved by a very large uh, ramp with a slow slope that allows to walk, to, to bike, uh, but also, if necessary, to come with a uh, track or to deserve uh, important uh, materials uh, at uh, every level, including terraces, which uh, uh, allows uh, uh, to relax. And uh, this ramp here, that's open to the public some, uh, some time, some days, sometimes on the weekend because uh, the roof of the building is, uh, is, a, is a big square of uh, 2,500 square meters, can be empty, but uh, can allow a lot of uh, different events, and also a good uh, place to see the panorama on the, on the city. So again, uh, different uh, uses. Or... Uh, outdoor cinema, like uh, last uh, summer during uh, three uh, months. And that was totally organized by the students 
in the framework of uh, one studio. They built the screen, they calculated the, the uh, scaffoldings to build the screen, they organized the seats, they organized the bar, and uh, so on. And it's part of the uh, uh, art event uh, of uh, the city. One of the last projects is, uh, again, another space for art, uh, which was supposed to be uh, uh, to, to reuse this uh, industrial uh, hall in, um, in um, the north of uh, France. And in this case, uh, in this case uh, our aim was uh, not to lose, not to lose this uh, amazing space that we uh, have in hand when we started the project. So this was uh, this. Uh, the competition was on this uh, building, which was uh, remaining from a uh, uh, recent past of a very big uh, industrial uh, era where they built uh, ships, and uh, the place has been has been totally uh, emptied just to uh, create now a new uh, housing neighborhood, and uh, just this building has been kept. kept as a kind of a memory of, uh, of uh, the lost uh, industrial uh, time. So the visit of the space, uh, when they opened the door, let us uh, see this amazing uh, space, totally empty, uh, of uh, 75 meters long, uh, 35 meters high, uh, with a lot of uh, light, very strong structures, uh, very strong floor, because they they were used to uh, make here the last uh, assemblage of uh, big pieces of boats before uh, they move uh, to the sea. So we had the first intuition uh, visiting this space that uh, uh, it was so amazing that it was uh, a mistake to, uh, to fill it. So because the program proposed to fill the space with the floors to organize inside uh, 77,500 7, um, uh, square meters of uh, exhibition space and the storage for uh, the artwork. It's a, it's a public collection that would be hosted in uh, this place. So that was uh, the first uh, drawing of uh, what was uh, requested in uh, the program. And finally, after having uh, really worked on this, uh, uh, on uh, that uh, uh, intention. Uh, we followed our intuition and we decided that we will not uh, fill the space, but we will uh, build a new building like a twin, uh, uh, just on the side of uh, the existing uh, hall, uh, exactly of the same shape. Uh, and here we could uh, keep this one totally empty as, as a gift uh, to, the, uh, to the program, as an amazing space for any exhibition or event that we could not provide uh, with uh, the program, and uh, to build uh, on the other side this uh, new construction uh, with uh, uh, more easy to make uh, what was uh, requested in terms of uh, uh, floors, of uh, capacity of uh, floors, of uh, uh, also uh, air conditioning, or uh, that uh, would have been very difficult to make in uh, this building, or uh, if not, the condition would have been to change radically the envelope of this building. And of course, we uh, propose to make it in the same uh, budget if we had the chance, if we wanted to have a chance that this uh, proposal should be uh, uh, accepted. So, and uh, the, the, the goal is also to have um, a double envelope uh, to create this uh, intermediate uh, climatic space that would allow to reduce the needs uh, for installation in the program, the space. So that uh, was the rendering of the competition that we, we won it. The, the, um, the bridge uh, was not part of our project. It was uh, a requirement of the master plan, and we decided to keep it and uh, uh, to cross uh, the, the building uh, the moment we arrived at the building. So the section with uh, one side is uh, the storage, and in blue, this, uh, this is uh, the exhibition. And the goal is uh, to bring very fast the visitors to the last level uh, under the roof, uh, 
This is uh, the main uh, space. The connection with uh, the new building, we have just created this, uh, we have opened in between the columns and we have created these uh, openings. The staircase, which are in, uh, in between the, the envelope and, uh, and uh, the, the core, and they are they allow to look at the landscape out of the system of exhibition. The exhibition rooms, and uh, one of them is uh, nine meters in the ceiling, as it was uh, requested. And this last level, which, which is uh, not program, unprogrammed, but uh, given by this uh, uh, construction with the structure and uh, the main uh, envelope. So it's a very nice uh, space uh, used for opening parties, but also for exhibition or just for, uh, for visiting uh, for the public. And then the visit can continue in between the two buildings, the existing and the new. And some platforms that allows to see uh, what happens on the, the main hall, but also allow to deliver our artworks from the main hall to, uh, to the new uh, exhibition space. And uh, night view. And then, just to let, know, to let you know about uh, the photo of the uh, poster, uh, this one is really not to do. And uh, this is a project, uh, the story of a little square in the city of Bordeaux. In uh, 1996, we were invited uh, by the city of Bordeaux with uh, some other colleagues to work on uh, little squares of the city in, uh, um, in, uh, as a first approach of a very big uh, program of uh, uh, embellishment of the squares of the city. That was the title of uh, the project, Embellishment of the square. And we, have to, we had to work on this uh, little square, which was not really in the city center, but on a quite insulated uh, little neighborhood. So we went there and uh, we, uh, we observed. Uh, we, went, we had four months to, to make this study and to provide the project. And uh, we uh, observed everything, the, the quality of the architecture, the quality of the square, the uses of people, and uh, finally, at, um, after four months, we came back and uh, we presented uh, uh, to the jury a project. And uh, we said, as a question um, to embellish a sp the uh, square, our reply is uh, uh, the, the square is already beautiful and our project is to do nothing. So that's important to, to know that um, uh, making, uh, making architecture is... Um, is uh, sometimes not to build. It's much more to understand. Designing a project is uh, first to understand, to observe, to analyze the needs, the constraints, to simplify the complexity, and to propose a response. And the response is not on always and necessarily building. So that was the case in, uh, in this uh, square. And uh, this is not uh, to be understood as... Uh, refusing to do something. It's a project of doing nothing, which uh, makes a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anne, for this um, condensed version of... Uh, of the work of uh, La Carton Vazin. And I'm, I'm still very glad that we uh, asked you in the series because I think it gives a slightly different kind of uh, reading of it. I have just maybe, uh, I think we have still some time for a couple of questions. Um, uh, I have one of, which is actually lingering for quite some time now in my head. For instance, uh, for the uh, Tour Bois le Prêtre, uh, as an example, but it could actually also be applied to other projects. Uh, you say that if you would demolish and rebuild, it's 180,000 euros, more or less? More or less? Uh, well, the, uh, that's so what well, I the demolition was uh, 
20 million for the yeah, 100 for, dwellings. Per, per apartment, 180,000. And that you achieved one third of the price. No, and not in Tour Bois Le because uh, okay. in, in Paris everything is more expensive. But it but was still, nearly half. Okay, there's, there's still mm. this kind of gain. So you. Yes. And I'm always wondering what happens to the rest of the money. Are you, do you also propose, um, let's say, alternatives for this kind of uh, budgets, or do they just vanish, or is it, uh, is uh, it, I, is it part of uh, the proposal? I, can, anyway? I cannot imagine that they, they vanish it, but um, our proposal when, when we work on the plus was to make this uh, balance between uh, 20, 20 billions uh, to demolish and rebuild 150,000 dwellings. It means a cost of 150,000 per dwelling. And also, in the other hand, uh, inside these 20 billions, they plan to renovate uh, something like 300,000 dwellings for a cost of 15,000 per dwelling. So we propose to make a balance in between. It means that if we use the 20 millions to make transformation like Tour Bois Le Prêtre, we could make the 400,000 dwellings uh, and bring them at the same condition as Tour Bois Le Prêtre. So the, the money was here, the money has been spent, but uh, it was spent in the. Uh, so, um, uh, of course, that would be a. Uh, for us, it would be the goal to, to try to manage this budget and to use what we have uh, saved. But uh, it's not really working like that. You could, you could make it if it's your own money, but... Because, for instance, in uh, 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 Plaza Leon Coq, uh, there's a budget which was actually uh, foreseen yeah. for the, let's mm -hmm. say, afterlife of yeah. the non-project. Mm -hmm. We have not spent it. Mm. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I think the, the question is... Um, the quality of a project is not, um, is not to be appreciated uh, in regard to the money you spend. Uh, the only question is that uh, for whom we are doing economies. But, uh, and we don't want to, make, uh, to save money uh, without giving benefit to, uh, uh, to the inhabitants. But we see that in the case of the transformation, uh, we save money and we give more to the inhabitants. So it's really something possible. Uh, but uh, it's, it's not really in, uh, in the common sense. So it's, we arrive to make it on some projects, but we don't arrive to, man to manage uh, the entire uh, uh, the budget we don't use. We cannot manage it. Maybe That's the same for the, the building in uh, Dunkerque, the FRAC. Uh, I think we saved two millions, but the two millions have been spent in another project which was much more expensive than say, it was uh, uh, planned. So maybe it's, Andreas, it's really question? a problem. Yes. Thank you so much. I say hello to Andreas. So uh, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Um, yeah. I, I'm, actually, I know her Quite well. And like I told, my name is Andreas Ruby, and we worked uh, on an exhibition on the Tour Bois Le Prêtre uh, project uh, that went to um, Frankfurt, Berlin, and Berlin. Graz, right? Berlin. Um, Berlin, yes, mm -hmm. of course. And um, I just remembered something uh, when you showed me f for the first time the PLUS study that you did for this mm. French Ministry of Communication, yes. I think, mm. yeah. When was that? 2004, right? Mm. Or oh, earlier? Mm. In this project, where you proposed, where you showed fictitiously, I mean, like taking a couple of existing uh, uh, buildings mm. that were earmarked for demolition, mm. you showed how they could be transformed. But mm -hmm. in difference mm. to your later built projects, there you didn't only propose apartments, but also collective uses. Mm. I remember like a laundry saloon for everybody mm -hmm. so that yes. people didn't have... To reuse uh, the first levels. To and the first levels, exactly, yes, where yes. people don't mm -hmm. want to live. So mm -hmm. those lower levels, I think like the first two or three levels. Uh, levels for yeah. community space or yeah. working space. or L Libraries and mm -hmm. a hammam even. Yes, yeah. yes. Or, um, or kitchen for the families. Exactly, and like mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. cinema, all this kind of stuff. So why, why did... You know, I'm really curious. I mean, this was a very clear and very strong proposal because you not only, I mean, you in a way also made a critique 
of the monofunctional programming yes. of those housing buildings, mm. which yes. have been built all over France, mm. like in that time. And you not only showed like how the apartments could be um, improved, but also how the programming and the entire urbanism of the entire mm. neighborhood could be improved mm. because you would give um, the kind of like opportunities for how to spend your time, yeah. not just in your apartment, but also collectively. If you think about the, the mission of social housing, you would say, yes, exactly, that is social housing, because you create a space where the society can occur. Now, the strange thing is that in none of the projects that you built then later on, which are all social housing, right? It's all mm. HLM kind of uh, programming or financing. Any of these ideas were taken up. Why is that so? Why is social housing in France, but also some other places, Germany is the same, condemned to be so asocial, mm. to imprison people in their apartments and not give them any kind of opportunity to actually meet each other, share things, which is so important today? Yeah. Can, you, can you explain? Because I'm sure you made the proposal for that mm. kind of yeah. multi-programming. Mm. Why is that so? No, you are, you are right that uh, between um, the theoretical uh, proposal of uh, PLUS, which is totally possible to, to do, and uh, the reality of the three main projects that we did, it's quite different. Uh, we really struggled uh, to, to make it. We arrived to make uh, some common spa community space in Tour Bois le Prêtre because we cleaned uh, the ground floor which were occupied by storage and uh, to make uh, some uh, community rooms, but only at the scale of the building. And it worked uh, a little time because uh, very fast uh, the owner decided to take some of them to make offices for them. So, so uh, that's a very big challenge because... Um, I think that our societies are not, uh, or the, the people who have uh, the possibility to decide, are not ready to this, uh, the, the mixity of views. Uh, it's something that uh, everywhere you can read that uh, the city should uh, make mixed use, and this is uh, nowadays the main goal of uh, everyone. But in fact, it's uh, something which is uh, extremely difficult to, to do. For, for many reasons, cultural reasons, but also for reasons of uh, ownerships and how to, to solve the problem of different ownerships in, uh, in the same, uh, in one building. So it's one of the main questions. I think we, we, we nearly arrived to make something in uh, Saint-Nazaire where we did the transformation and uh, densification. And in the, in the original project, there was a, kind of a crown that we added on the two first levels, ground floor and two levels, to create uh, uh, public activities or other use. That was, uh, we nearly arrived to make it, but uh, during the time of the project, the, uh, the director of the social housing company moved to Bordeaux, and the new one didn't want to follow this uh, process. So it's... Uh, we are really very far away from uh, this uh, approach of uh, mixing uh, use uh, in, uh, in uh, blocks, in, sit in uh, buildings. And uh, what is also very difficult to do is to mix people in uh, buildings. For, for example, making social housing and private housing in the, in the same building, that could appear something quite uh, easy. Uh, it cannot happen. It cannot happen because uh, they explain you that uh, the subsidies come from different uh, uh, um, origins. That it's, uh, it's uh, quite difficult to do. So for us, it's a uh, it's a very big uh, frustration. And you know that we are already making so many efforts to arrive to achieve this project, but it's something which uh, that of course we feel unfinished. Uh, that we don't arrive to, to create this, uh, this connection with the city which is not existing in these blocks. Because it's one of the problems of uh, the, the master planning and the architecture of this time, is that the, the, the blocks are really planted on the ground and there is nothing around. And we are really convinced that we must also create um, a, a city layer uh, that will make the intermediate uh, use and intermediate uh, life between uh, public space and private space. 
But uh, I must say that we are not yet arrived to this point. <laughs> yeah, I have a question about authorship. How do you see things? Um, the different systems you invented, uh, do you see them as a personal approach or as a generic system that could be reused by other architects? Uh, you know that in, uh, in architecture you don't really invent systems, you invent projects. And uh, what we are using is uh, products that uh, uh, everyone can uh, find them in uh, on the market. Uh, just the way how we place them uh, all together. So. Um, I'm not sure that we are inventing systems. I think we are inventing a way of thinking, inventing project, inventing space, but not really system. And uh, of course, it can be reproduced by everyone. We would be very happy that uh, many, many buildings could be renovated like this. And uh, we know that we cannot do them by uh, just ourselves. So no, there is no problem to use it. You start tomorrow? Anybody but else? Of course, if you use it in a simple way. Uh, I have another question about uh, La Tour of Bois de Prêtre in, in the Bordeaux building. Because it's obviously beautiful uh, for us architects and for those who live inside. And it's obviously smart because you, it was economically smart. And, and, um, but the problem still is that it seems quite a struggle to convince mayors. To convince? Convince the mayors, the politics. So, yes. so, so why is that? It's smart. Uh, uh, of course, one reason is that if you would make a referendum of uh, if they want to keep those post-war housing buildings, 99% or 90% would say destroy mm. them. Those who are not living there. Yeah. Mm. But how, uh, how is it? Is it it's your role then, uh, you know, as well as being uh, kind of a smart uh, analyst and, uh, and, uh, and a very smart uh, architect, also a uh, negotiator? So wh wh why is it so hard to convince uh, very obviously beautiful mm. projects to, mm. to other cities and whole Eastern Europe would need this mm. now? I think we don't have really a, a response to this question because uh, if we have it, we, we could make... Uh, more more projects because uh, now uh, the last one uh, completed in Bordeaux we have no other commission no other contact no other really uh, concrete interest in the same time we get maybe uh, all the awards uh, that can exist uh, for uh, transformation renovation so we uh, we collection the the awards for the quality and the interest of this project but uh, it seems that uh, between the, the, the field of uh, ideas, of uh, the culture, and uh, the, the field of decision, uh, this, uh, this gap is uh, really uh, enormous. So maybe one... Um, I, I, I don't <coughs> have really a response. I, uh, sometimes we have some uh, ideas that... Uh, uh, because, because it is social housing. And maybe that... Uh, it's not really said, uh, but uh, social housing is uh, in a way something which is uh, subsidized, which is for people with uh, low incomes. And uh, finally, uh, for example, in Paris, uh, no one has uh, dwellings that tourbois le prêt for the rent they pay. So in a way, uh, it's, my, it's uh, something I, I, I take the risk to say it, but it's never said, of course. That maybe uh, for social housing it uh, could be too much, too beautiful. Too... So maybe if we could arrive to make it for a very rich uh, ownership, that would be more convincing. It's terrible, but you know, it's, uh, you know that you, you cannot imagine how, how, much, you, how, how, how much energy we, we must develop to make such uh, projects and uh, uh, bring them uh, without uh, compromising. And uh, uh, we, we were lucky in, uh, in, like in Bordeaux or to, to have a very good uh, client who is uh, not the city, but the director of uh, the social housing company who himself really struggled 
uh, with uh, the city to uh, uh, to uh, arrive to this project. But it's uh, it's very difficult. Um, if, even if uh, finally projects are not really difficult, the construction, if you if you work well, if you have a good method of working, is not uh, more difficult than, than uh, something else. Um, we can really control the, the economy uh, due to the scale of uh, the construction. Uh, uh, it's, it's really something that uh, we really don't understand why. Uh, uh, this, uh, during the same time, so many uh, buildings are renovated in a very bad way, just with uh, insulation or without uh, any quality. So it's, uh, it's a big... Um, it's a big uh, question. It's, uh, we didn't have really a response. We studied also um, other projects. With, uh, the, the, the paradox is that uh, in France, for example, only the social housing companies have, have uh, the money to make that because uh, the own private ownerships, many times they don't have because it's not, they are not all uh, very rich. And we have developed... Um, uh, research about how we could uh, um, also uh, using um, working at the same time with uh, densification and transformation uh, because we, we for example we studied in uh, in Paris a lot of uh, case uh, of um, uh, housing of that period of 60s 70s and uh, uh, our research um, uh, arrives to to say that uh, nearly uh, always we can find a capacity of densification on the ground because uh, the, the, the buildings are really compressed, compact, but uh, very often there is a lot of ground around. So there is a, a capacity of uh, building, densifying case by case. Sometimes it's a few dwellings, sometimes it's 20, sometimes 40. And uh, it's very interesting to... Um, to develop a kind of uh, economical model that would allow with uh, the construction of new housing, uh, which would be uh, subsidized by the, the ownership, and then they sell it at the cost of the market, and they get incomes to renovate their uh, own uh, dwellings in, in, uh, in uh, such a way. So that's uh, something which is very promising, but uh, for now we didn't find any uh, owner that would uh, agree to, uh, to, to make this uh, experiment. Thank you. Uh, last question, maybe? No question? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Um, when you were talking about the, the lifespan or extending the lifespan of old housing blocks, I started to ask myself, do you also plan the lifespan of your extension? Do you, do you think, like, what will be your part in, I don't know, 50 years from now? Is, is that part, especially if you also build with, with kind of low budget material or very rough material? Hmm. I didn't agree, the word rough. <laughs> No, just for the question uh, about, uh, I think there are some some limits of uh, extension because also uh, in a city you are of course limited to extend and extend the buildings. But uh, it's it's why uh, I, I I did also the comparison with uh, some of the buildings which were built at the same time, but now they don't need any uh, extension or transformation because they had from the origin a good quality of uh, housing. Of course, it may change, and uh, who knows, we, we, we cannot uh, uh, predict what happens in uh, 50 years. But uh, we think that doing these uh, extensions uh, with uh, extra space, winter gardens, uh, balconies, we think that we, we bring uh, the dwellings to a, a, a good level that may uh, last quite, uh, quite long. But... Um, of course, it's uh, possible to imagine that uh, that could be uh, extended, but um, extension has also limit because uh, uh, then we are at a good limit here uh, with uh, the, the quality of light inside because uh, it's in interesting to extend if all the surface you have already can be still used. But if you extend too much and uh, if you bring uh, the existing surface in the dark, 
maybe it's not really necessary. So it's, uh, it's interesting to really evaluate case by case uh, what is the dimension of extension, you know, where you have to do it. It's not, uh, it's not a system or a solution that you apply like this everywhere. It's uh, important really to first uh, to make a very good observation and a good analysis. And uh, one of the questions is uh, first to start with uh, what is positive, what is good that uh, you really have to save and what is missing that we have to, uh, to bring. So, and from the point of view of the, the quality of space, interior space and the quality of living. And I think that that's this condition. Uh, uh, it's, uh, um, we, we have chance to, uh, to, to adapt the right solution to, uh, to every uh, situation. Thank you, Anne. Thank um, you very just much. before we close off, uh, we'd like to invite you, for those who are still here, next week we have the last uh, lecture in the series, which is exceptionally on a Wednesday at 2.30, so I hope you can escape the studio for a very brief moment. It's Laurent Stalder and François Charbonnet, so it's a duo presentation, ETH, not ETH, and I think it will be also very, let's say, different and very exciting uh, uh, type of lecture and a thousand thanks. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thank you.